Welcome to International Headquarters for the Nation of Yahweh. The nation of Israel, the tribe of Judah, who is chosen to be ruler forever. So-called black man of America is the tribe of Judah, and it is you that Yahweh chose to rule the earth forever. First Chronicles 28.4, read. How be it, the Lord God Yahweh of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. You are chosen, so-called black man of America, to be king over Israel. I'm the king of kings, but you are chosen to be king, ruler over Israel. Yahweh has established the perfect order, proving that though you be kings, there's someone over you. Praise Yahweh. Therefore, my coming as the son of Yahweh only demonstrates through the son submitting to the father, by the son keeping the laws of the father, then all who follow the son must do as the son does. And Yahweh has fixed it where you cannot be saved except you come through the son. I am the door, and if you try to get into heaven any other way than by me, you become a thief and a robber. John 10, 1. Truly, truly, I'm saying unto you that are here in this auditorium and all who hear my voice over this broadcast in your home, your cars, or by the ghetto radio, earplugs, earphones. <laughs> I'm saying to you that anyone who tries to enter or any other way than the door into my sheepfold and try to climb up some other way, you're a thief and you're a robber. And we have an awful lot of preachers who know I'm here trying to climb up some other way. See, it says here, the door. That's limited. See, that it didn't say preachers can go in the doors they want to go in. And not only the preacher, politicians. Any of my people who want to be leaders over the black men of America, if you are trying to climb into the sheepfold, not a sheepfold, and you don't want to come by me, you're a thief and you're a robber. Thief of what? Thief of everything. You just an uh, absolute thief. Rob who? Anybody. You rob grandma, grandpa, <laughs> uncles and aunts, cousins, nieces and nephews. You rob mama and you take all the pennies she gives to her children. You take those too. And you take it up in the name and of the Lord, as you say, in a title, so you're real slick. You take it up in the name of a title, the Lord, knowing you aren't going to take the Lord in it. 
Then you claim you take it to do the Lord's work, but the Lord didn't send you. You've never seen the Lord. You don't know the Lord. And all preachers and black leaders seem to have different kind of lords because none of them get along together. <laughs> 400,000 churches, 400,000 preachers, 400,000 different beliefs and ideologies, 400,000 different ways to do a thing, and all 400,000 are in it to each other. Who suffers? My people who follow such who have the nerve to lie in the name of the law. So I'm quoting the word on you, brother preacher and brother leader, and brother politician and brother anybody you want to say you are. If you're not coming by Yahweh bin Yahweh, you are a thief and a robber. And as soon as my people, the sheep, wake up, and become conscious of you being a thief and a robber, they're not going to have to hit you in the head with a hammer. They're going to walk out of your church and come home to the true shepherd, Yahweh Ben Yahweh. <laughs> Where I'll do you good all the days of your life. Now how can you tell whether they're the true shepherd and I'm the true shepherd, or whether they're the false shepherd, and I'm the false shepherd. How can you tell? Well, truly, truly, I say unto you, he that entereth not by Yahweh and Yahweh into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, same as a thief and a robber. I enter in by the door of Yahweh, and I am therefore the shepherd of the sheep. The door is open for me. And the sheep are hearing my voice. I call my sheep by name because you're my own sheep. And I lead you out of the pits of confusion. And I lead you out of ignorance. I lead you out of a blind, deaf, dumb, ignorant, and dead condition. I lead you from poverty out to riches. I lead you from hunger to food, from thirst to plenty of quiet, cool water. You're able to come in and go out and find pasture and cool streams of fresh, clear, purified water without pollution. I am the door of the sheep and all that ever came before me, every leader that has ever come before me, they all are thieves and robbers. You hear ever? You ever heard the word ever? Well, verse 8 says all, there's no exception to this. But I'm so glad that you who are my sheep refuse to hear them. I am the door, and by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. You want to be saved from the troubles of this world? You must enter in by me. You'll be able to go in, come back, go out, come back, and find plenty of pastor. Green pastor. Green money. Plenty of it. Now the thief has a different program for you. He comes. He comes. He's in all our neighborhoods. But the only reason he comes is to steal from you. And that's not all he comes to do. He has another program. It's called Kill You. 
Can you imagine a man that looks just like you, has been killing your family before you were born, and been killing you and murdered you? You say, what? But I'm still walking around. Yes, but he told you that you couldn't get along without your enemy. Yes, he did. He, that's, that's death to think you can't survive without your oppressor. Imagine that. Someone is oppressing you. Someone is beating you. There's someone blowing out your brains as you ride a motorcycle. He shoots your brains out because you made a traffic violation. And then they start fixing up the pretrial to let you know how the trial is going to go to hold themselves not guilty. And your leaders tell you, you can't live or survive without these people. While they murder two million of your babies every year and call it abortion, as if that's, and they call it legal. And yet, if you wait three more months and have the baby and kill him, they call it murder. Same baby. Put you in jail for doing what they said was okay for them to do three months earlier. Same baby. And they say, we can't live without the murderers of our babies. And we believe them. And continue to allow them to murder our babies. While the leaders tell you, you can't live without the murderers of your future. So he's not only a thief, my book say he is also a killer. What does his brother preacher tell us? Love the murderers of our babies two million strong. Though they murder our babies two million strong every year, keep on loving them. In other words, don't stop them from killing your babies. I'm trying to figure out how you're going to survive with two million of your babies being killed every year. You travel around America and you see other nations having millions of babies. They have two in the stroller, one in the belly, one hanging on the back, and carrying one in the arm. You go in the black neighborhood, I haven't seen a baby in a long time. Niggas aren't having babies no more. What's gonna happen to you? Think about it. All the ones having babies are my disciples. I teach people around me, you better have some babies. You're gonna need somebody to bring you a glass of water when you get that arthritis. You're going to get it, eating pork, you're guaranteed to get it. Your grandma got it, your mama has it, and you're beginning to eat now. <laughs> you're going to need a lot of kids to bring you something. You're going to be like a baby yourself trying to crawl around your house. And without kids, you're going to be who you're going to call on. You don't have nobody but you. The man, he's gonna leave you when you can't move. <laughs> he's all stoved up with arthritis, lumbago, and gout himself. <laughs> he all swole up, can't get up. He have to roll out of bed, have a potty at the bed, 
Can't walk to the toilet. You can't do much better. You roll out on the other side. <laughs> Need a wheelchair at the, at the bed. Fingers all curled up. Wrists all swole. Joints big. It hurts you to try to roll the wheelchair. Can't afford a nurse. You never made any money all your life. And don't have any kids, no grandkids, nobody to rub your old aching joints, <laughs> nobody to put liniment. See, see, when I came along, I could rub my grandma's, put liniment on stuff. I learned what liniment was and witch hazel and those old arthritic pig bones were cutting up. <laughs> <laughs> and she told me it felt good when I rubbed the toes and I just worked myself to death because she said it feels good and I was making her feel good and I thought that was wonderful. And I just rub her till she go to sleep. What are you going to do with our children? Something to think about. Thief comes just to steal and to kill and to destroy you. That's his game. Now you know it takes an ignorant group of people to follow a man, pay him to steal from them. Huh? I mean to pay a man that kills you, that teaches you to hate yourself, hate your own kind, and love all the other kinds. I don't have a problem with you loving all other people, but I have a problem when you don't love your own family. Hmm? See, I have a problem when you treat other people better than you treat your own sisters and brothers. I have a problem with that. And you can't be one of my disciples acting like that. You may put on white, but you're not mine unless the world see you showing love one, two, and nine. Yes, Only way you can be mine is that you show love to each other. See, you're going to address the L of other nations and then act like your sister and brother don't have an L. I'm on course. I haven't deviated from the script. I'm on the script. Now he's a murderer, so he can't go to heaven. He's a killer. And the scriptures teach us no murderer can enter heaven. Where? I John 3.15. You can't make it. Can't make it. No killer can enter. You can't hate your brother and your sister and think you're going to heaven. I, John, chapter 3, verse 15. Read. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. In verse 16, it says, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. That your brethren are more important than your life. That's what the brotherhood is about. Y'all see that? That's verse 16. You, you, you missed that? Huh? See, I hear, hereby perceive we the love of God, Yahweh, because... He laid down his life for her. That's what I, I'm the one. I'm the one. I've laid down my life for you. So, since that's what I've done, then you ought to lay down your life for the brethren. In other words, the brotherhood is more important than your life. The good of the brotherhood. All that is. For I said, the good of the brotherhood is more important than your life. Now that means you have to have a lot of love for your brother.
St. John, chapter 15, verse 13. Read. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Now, did we read the other verse? Where it says, if you hate your brother, you can't enter heaven? Yes, sir. Yeah, see, we, you can't make it hate your brother, your sister. That's impossible. Now, who does this leave the burden on? You. Burden's off me. How's the burden off me? I'm the one teaching you. Showing you the way to heaven. Now it's up to you. What you want to do about it. And all of my disciples choose to show love one to the other. 